Easter Sunday Mass with Bishop Larry Silva is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Honolulu. This presentation has been pre-recorded in response to the COVID-19 crisis. For the latest updates on Mass times and other services, visit catholichawaii.org.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We gather on this joyful day at this Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace in Honolulu, and we wish you Happy Easter, the Easter greetings of the risen Lord, whom we celebrate today, this greatest event of the history of the world, the resurrection of the Lord from the dead. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we begin this celebration, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord. St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
when Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christians face your vows to pay. Make your joy and praises known to the Paschal Victim. For the sheep the Lamb has bled, sinless in a sinner's stead. Christ the Lord is risen on high. Now he lives no more to die. Christ the Victim undefiled, godless sin is reconciled. Christ has fought with death and won for us life eternal. Christians, on this happy day, raise your hearts with joy and say, Christ the Lord is risen on high. Now he lives no more to die. Hello, chosen dawn of praise, Easter queen of all our days, Zion's children everywhere, come and share your glory. Let the peoples praise you, Lord, be by all that is adored. Let the nation shout and sing. Glory to the Paschal King. Christ, who once for sinners fled, now the firstborn from the dead, Rolled in endless might and power, lives and reigns forever. Hymns of glory, songs of praise, Father, unto you be praised. Risen Lord, we now adore, with the Spirit According to John, glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, 
the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Are we the most foolish and naive of all people on earth? Are we just so indoctrinated with our faith that we say things that are simply unbelievable? Here we are singing our alleluias with joyful voices while practically the whole world seems to be falling apart. People are confined to their homes because of the coronavirus and our economy is turned on its head. Or worse, people are suffering and dying from this mysterious disease, which has stopped practically the whole world. And here we are rejoicing. Even before the coronavirus became a household word, the world was in great disarray. Countries warring one against another, terrorism prevailing over law and order in many countries, political parties punching at each other, hoping to eliminate their opponent, religious groups, including Christians, being persecuted in certain parts of the world. People are scandalized by certain priests molesting minors. Teen suicides are on the rise, and stable marriages are in decline. Opioid use is an epidemic. More and more people are homeless for more and more reasons. But here we are singing Alleluia and raising our voices in joyful praise. The image of the emperor fiddling while Rome burned comes to mind, and with it the accusation that we Christians are just so out of touch that None of these catastrophes seem to matter. Are we indeed the most foolish and naive people on earth? The fact is, however, that we must sing, dance, and rejoice. Jesus, who was put to death so cruelly to silence his voice forever, is risen from the dead and continues to speak to us his challenging words of mercy and love. He, of all people, was aware of the great problems and sins of the world, and he volunteered himself to carry those sins to the cross, to nail them there, so that we could finally be freed from them, if we look to the cross. Only if we do can our attitudes change. We must sing of the risen Jesus because only he can bring us out of the tombs we create ourselves and lock ourselves in. And only he can free us from the tombs that nature and circumstances beyond our control can put us in. In his resurrection, Jesus turned the world upside down. He brought more heaven to earth than had ever been experienced before in this veil of tears. His risen presence brought so much joy to his disciples that they who before were locked away with fear now went out into the streets and public squares to proclaim the gospel at the price of their own suffering and death. So overwhelmed were they 
with the joy of experiencing the love of Jesus that they burst out of their locked room to go to every corner of the world to tell the good news. How many people are aching this Easter because they cannot experience the physical communion with the risen Jesus that brings them so much life and joy. Certainly they can lament the fact of being shut out of the churches, but still they can sing for joy because the risen Jesus, who appeared and disappeared during the 40 days after his resurrection, is with us wherever we are. When Mary Magdalene and the other women and Peter and John went to the empty tomb, this, they knew this was not a theft of the body. Though they did not see him immediately, they believed. When Jesus did appear, he only did so for a short time, but that short time convinced them of his everlasting love that conquers sickness, sin, and even death itself. So even though most cannot be in the physical presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, he is still very much with you, risen and active in our lives and in the world. Yes, Perhaps we are foolish and naive for singing Alleluia in the midst of so much suffering in our world. But this foolishness is God's greatest wisdom. Because now that Jesus has conquered death itself, we ultimately have nothing to fear if we put our faith in him. Whether we see him or not, whether we feel his presence at any given moment or not, it is right and just, our duty and our salvation to joyfully sing Alleluia to a world that longs for that good news. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. I saw water coming from the bright side of the temple. It brought God's life and his salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I saw water flowing 
seen from the bright side of the temple. It brought God's life and His salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Filled with joy and hope, realizing the promise of new life, we bring our needs to God who has raised Jesus from death to life. For the church, that we may always witness to the glory of the resurrection in our words and actions. Let peace and joy may permeate the world, especially in countries, cities, and neighborhoods that suffer violence and war as to the lands where Jesus walked. Epulekako, Epulekako, e aloha mai. For those who suffer from chronic illnesses and for those who care for them, that they may find comfort and hope in the arms of the Lord. Epulekako, for all of us who today celebrate the Lord's resurrection, that we might bring the light of Christ to all darkened corners of our world. For the elect, catechumens, and candidates, that the Lord continues to wrap his loving arms around them and give them faith, strength, and peace as they patiently wait for the day in which they will fully be welcomed to his church. <speaking in Spanish> For healing for those who are sick and suffering from during this current pandemic, for the peaceful repose of all who have died, and for the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Epulekako, Epulekako, God of life. You raised your Son from the dead and gave us all a share in the promise of new life with him. Hear the prayers we offer today and grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Lord, our Christ at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts 
sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Our Lady of Peace, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Damien, Saint Marianne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. On your day.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the Diocese of Honolulu for the ending of the coronavirus pandemic. Dear God of all the living, you sent your son Jesus to heal us from illness and sin. We turn to his healing power in this time of anxiety over the pandemic of this potentially deadly virus. Saint Damien and Saint Marianne Cope dedicated their lives to service of those who had an infectious disease. Saint Marianne Cope said, I am not afraid of any disease because she was confident of your power to save. At the same time, she took prudent precautions of hygiene to assure that she and her sisters would not be infected. Let us learn from this example to put our trust in you, to save us from the ravages of disease, and to take prudent measures to prevent its spread. Guide us to know when to isolate ourselves from the possibility of infection but never let anyone be left without the care and concern of others in the community. As our Diocese of Honolulu has been dedicated to the divine mercy, we pray with confidence, Jesus, I trust in you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, out on for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs of an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Oh, in peace, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Easter Sunday Mass with Bishop Larry Silva is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Honolulu. This presentation has been pre-recorded in response to the COVID-19 crisis. For the latest updates on Mass times and other services, visit catholichawaii.org.